Get your day started right. From our shack to yours, this is Coffee and Ham Radios. We are live in five, four, three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live. Somebody hit the go live button. I was like, What's I did on, on time. Like I'm supposed, that? I just did about it. About time, Jim. About Y'all were flapping your a bunch of old men up here flapping their jaws about tractors. Yeah, well, beep, beep, at least beep, I wasn't beep. rocking out to Aretha Franklin. I mean, that was not really Aretha was. Franklin. Oh yeah, it was, the pimp. it was the pips. It was Gladys, it was Gladys Knight. Knight and the pips. In the pimps, pips, right? <laughs> yes. I don't know. He's in, I got in here. He's, guys, I, I was not <laughs> doing that. <laughs> he is so. You were, oh, you're going you to hell for too. lying like that. Jesus you does not approve too. of that, Chuck. Yeah, I know. You should take note of your own comment. <laughs> we, we should have done is going live when he was doing that. I should have. I should have hit the button, and and not even. But it startled him when I clicked him into the, into the channel, into yeah, the stream. I was actually surprised it was you. I was expecting it to be <laughs> Ape doing that kind of shit. Doing what? Popping in there with your Popping normal, in. your normal greeting in our green room. Every oh day. yeah. <clears throat> Which we're not going to say because you can't say that in front of people. No, you can't. Well, good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Looks like we got a lot of folks in the chat. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Appreciate you being here. <clears throat> Today, we're going to talk some more about uh, toroids. I think we talked a little bit about them uh, on Thursday night, and I did a video on uh, Common Mochoke the other day, and we just keep getting more and more questions about it. So <clears throat> here we are talking about toroids, right? Roids. It's a subject yeah. that we go around a lot. That's right. But uh, before we get started, I um, got it. Dad joke. To let's go over do my quick, head. quick introductions. We got the to my one side. I think it's this direction. We have the other have one. The the voice of Northern California, Chuck. Uh, what are you up to over there? Ah, uh, well, good morning, everybody. I uh, I went out yesterday and uh, did some testing and tuning, some R and D on our new antenna. And uh, it's kind of a mess right now because I, I was trying to get some decent pictures. It's hard to get pictures of antennas. Ape was helping me with that, out with that. So that that uh, the video on that it worked really well. It uh, is flo- throwing flames, man. Things. I mean, it's a it's basically a, a dipole. So they always they usually work. And let's uh, take a look at that thing again. Okay. What part do you want to see? I don't know. Just oh, look at somewhere. that bumblebee. <clears throat> So you got some yeah, spreaders like, on there, right? Yeah, I, I designed up some spreaders. I don't know if they're 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 nice and light, but I may have to beef them up a little bit. I, I mean, I put it out yesterday for a couple hours and it was fine. It held the wires nice and it's it's so it's a fan dipole, guys. I don't know if I said that, but it was holding everything apart really well. And that's the problem is you can't if they're they're detachable. So so you and what is that thing the, back up 20, 20, 15, and ten. Yeah, 2015 and 10, uh, well, you'll get enough wire to do those three bands or anything higher, I guess. Would it do 12? You could. You could. Or, seven, or uh, 17, that would just be cutting the wires a different length? Yeah. You just, it just It's just a link thing. I'll probably give measurements for those that are close. Now, how yeah. out of whack would it be if you tried to do something like 12 on that? It's just a matter of spacing things different. 12 and 15 are pretty close. Twenty is nice to, because twenty gets it, right? you out there a ways, you know. Right. So you have some length. Um, forty, forty might be a little bit of a pain, but you could add forty to the twenty lead if you wanted to, probably. Just do a. Well, a yeah, I mean, you could do, you could just you could do forty and twenty with it if you wanted, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But what uh, did you yeah. start to say about a tuner? Eight. Oh, no, I was just saying you you could just tune it for those bands, right? Just cut it and, and, and tune it. I think the oh, the yeah. idea behind the antenna is that um, we wanted something on the higher frequencies mm-hmm. because they're they're hot right now, right? And so ten that's the, and ten anybody can use that has a license, you know, the tech right. and everybody, right? So ten's a good one, and some of the other bands I guess they can use for. Uh, I think so you could do you text. could do a ten and a six too, right? Isn't six open for no. ticks? No, yes. Not not that it's open anywhere you can talk on it, but <laughs> you could you, no, you could. Actually there's probably enough wire to do six, but I was able to tune it on my nine ninety one yesterday. It's close huh. enough to tune on six. Okay. I mean, but that was about the only other band I could get out of it. Wouldn't do seventeen, wouldn't do I mean forty was way out. I thought maybe forty might be that 
that third, you know, a short 40 maybe, but it wasn't. But uh, tuned up really nice. Took me two, two, two tries on the tune up. I had, uh, 20 was like almost perfect right off the bat, but I got it better. So I think we got I, I think a lot I took of folks six inches off from uh, the Midwest down in the chat. So just hope everybody is uh, recovering yeah. safely yeah. from all those storms. It's a that we had. Serious weather the past mm -hmm. couple of days, and yeah. if you if you're if you're having trouble, you know. My, my thoughts go out to you and your families in this time. It's a pretty serious. I mean, there was like cars that were picked up and thrown across the, the way. Well, they said that there were more than 40 tornadoes yesterday. Yep. And, um, I, you know, it was the news, so you don't know how true it is. But the, the one was saying that the tar one tornado was a mile wide. Can you imagine? Um, that's got to be some pretty uh, unnerving stuff. What do you got going on, T.O., on this April Fool's Day? So I, I had to break some news to a lot of uh, unhappy hams this morning that CW is no longer allowed on the ham radio bands. It's, it's been a long time coming. And, you know, first it started with removing the code requirement from the licensing. And mm -hmm. now that that's been gone for, what, three, four decades now, whatever the amount of time is, it's, uh, it's time that we reclaim that space on the band and use it for good. Use it for a digital right. mode. Is that uh, is that going to? Yeah, and somebody also said use it for AM because that's a much more friendly mode for QRP operators and especially in new ham. So I think yeah. that's a good one too. There you go, man. And then James, what do you got going over there? Uh, we have new merch that will be on the site probably Tuesday, maybe Wednesday. It depends on when it arrives. Yeah, I got a ship notice, so that be looking for that. And it's not electric. It's it's magnetic. Yeah. It's well, magnetic. I mean, why don't we just show a picture just, just or something? Just like Jim's man. personality, right? I mean, <laughs> I was I was trying to build the build the. No, no, no. I think that's as far as we go today. We have a show okay. on. Uh, All right. Monday, we can talk a little bit, tiny bit more about it. We have a show on Thursday. We can talk even a little tiny bit more well, about it. By Thursday, they should be hot, released. Oh well, then we got to cut a promo, so we have a new uh, voiceover. I was so Chuck. Gonna, Oh, I'm, I'm right here. I'm it. right here. Wow. <laughs> I just think Chuck's so, going to do a better job. <laughs> oh, I can do oh. the voice over the whole way. I mean, you're wearing your fire department T-shirt. You're you're in full man gear today. You can take I a, don't a ribbon. Even, right. That's I don't even Lala. care. The Pent right. Lala FD. Which boob is it? I can't remember. There we go. Ouch. That one. You're so all boob. The, the PFD. Yeah. I didn't feel like getting dressed up because y'all judge my shirt. And then Monday night, somebody would go, that's the same shirt you was wearing Saturday. I just called it, it on for the show to dress a, up for you. It's and a then uniform I took it off. for the show. Yes, it sits in the studio. And then you yes. put it on for an hour and a half, two hours, two and a half hours, depending on whether we're doing D-Star or not. If it's and then you Monday take it back night. off again. <laughs> that's right. Well, that's the thing is, is that he, he, he's down there in Alabama, so he probably doesn't wear a shirt most of the time, right? I mm. mean, isn't that kind of like standard? No, no, yeah. no, no. Ooh. He's got nope. he's got coffee and beer stains on his chest on his no. on his A shirt on, on my wife beater on my wife I, I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna say I was that trying to erase that from my I thought I thought that most people didn't wear shirts down there yeah. um, there you go you, have a you know the shoes. the meth heads probably do but or like a, a or like a, one of those Hanes beefy tank tops or whatever it is beefy I will stains. not tump the coffee onto my shirt although this shirt has probably had a lot worse than coffee on it to be honest. Mm. Yeah. So. See, I would throw that out then. Uh, you just wash it. You'd be all right. You wash it. God was right there <laughs> with you, Jim. W A R S H. Well, so uh, one of the questions I that we always get too. asked is, you know, can I use this toroid for this, or what toroid should I get, or what toroid should I buy? And um, Pelamar Engineering, while they're expensive, um, they really have good product, but they also have uh, good information on their website. And I'm not going to go through all this because it's a whole heck of a lot. But what this article does, and we can post the link, is um, it talks about the different material types that um, that most of the co more common toroids are made out of. And there's there's two basic uh, types. Like you have ferrite material, which is um, like a, a, a typically a mix of different magnetic. Uh, property or magnetic elements so you can see here like some of these are nickel zinc uh, some of them are magnesium zinc um, and then you have powdered iron uh, toroids and a lot of times people say oh don't use powdered iron <clears throat> well you can use powdered iron for 
specific things, and you can use mm -hmm. ferrite for specific things. Each one of these toroids types were developed for particular reasons, and that's to manipulate, I guess, uh, RF or energy in a circuit. And so they, this, what this table shows is different mix types. Uh, it talks about the material. It talks about the permeability. permeability. Um, and so when we talk about permeability, that is the, um, the a property of a tow, magnetic um, device like a toroid's ability to allow magnetic flux pass in and out. And the higher the permeability, the more uh, attenuation that you would get than a lower permeability. Now, it doesn't mean that higher is better. It doesn't mean lower is better. It's just what is appropriate for your use case. And what I really like about this table here is, is it tells you for um, RFI or EMI uh, suppression, so that's what you would use for a choke or a ballon, it tells you the frequencies that this particular device would work the best at. Um, and then at the end of it, it also has where it says for a wideband transformer. So a transformer is something like an un, un where you're doing impedance matching and it gives you the different, um, it gives you the different mix. So like for the antennas that we put together, when we did a lot of our testing and we're going through things, we ended up going with mix 43, um, toroid because it works well for, um, a, a choke. Like if you're, or one-to-one, -one, if you're going to, if you're going to use it like in a dipole fan dipole or something like that but it also works well um, for wideband transformer. Now, our antennas are typically designed to go from 40 to 10, right? Um, the reason we do that is because they're antennas for portable operation, and those are the more common portable frequencies that you would see. If we were going to do something that went to 80 meters, for example, um, well, we, would, we wouldn't, we'd still use the 42, but if we went bigger than that, we'd probably look at using like a 52, for example. But in today's, today's show, what we're going to do is take a look at testing some of these and just talk about different types and uh, throw them on the, on the VNA and do some comparison. VNA. And, did uh, you calibrate that VNA before the show? I did calibrate the VNA before Good, the show. so we don't have to waste our time on that. I actually calibrated it yesterday, and I left everything on because it's calibrated in the software because <laughs> I was having trouble with the Nano VNA saver. Um, <clears throat> what's crazy is, is that it, it, with Nano VNA saver, like, when I plugged it in, um, my Nano VNA, my USB hub started acting goofy and my audio chain started sounding weird. And then when I fixed the audio um, chain and I was having a problem <laughs> with, uh, with the Nano VNA, but I got it all working for today. So, hey, You want anything more on the Palomar page there, buddy? No, I think I'm, uh, I think I'm all right with that, unless anybody's got any questions or anything like I'm that. satisfied. <laughs> You're sated. All right, well, let me go to... OBS, and I think that uh, hopefully there's nothing sitting on the table that shouldn't be. See, Andy, be careful driving up there in the frozen tundra where you people live. Yeah, see, Andy. Zero land. Where you people. So we have a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, you peers. You, you poor No, those are haters. You poor people that live up there in the frozen tundra of the north. We got a bunch of stuff on the table. Um, and this is just what, what I was going to talk a little bit about. I see, I this see is that. for Winnie. Thanks, Brian. Do the white man dance. Winnie, we dancing for you, baby. He needs some My milk. wife's looking at me funny. Yeah, Brian, that's thank not you. That normal. <laughs> well, nor she, normally, she looks at you funny, though, right? Right. All right, see if we can do this better. Oh, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to do that. Good night. All right, so. What we have is a, is a bunch of different uh, toroids that some of these are, are older that I made a long time ago when I was testing certain things out. But there's a, there's a couple of different ways that, t that you make these. This is a, um, a T140-43, and so 140 is the outer diameter across of, of the toroids. So that's how that naming convention And that's works. an inches, right? It is. It's uh, the, uh, okay. the, the way God intended. Amen. Um, so this this would so just colorful. be colorful. Yeah, this is just a basic um, wrapping that you will see uh, on uh, on chokes or toroids, and I think that's similar to what we use on. That was some our, awesome focus there. Mercury. It was amazing. But see, when, when you when you have these, what you can do then is put them into <clears throat> like a box or a container like this, and then I have an inline um, ballon, or I can use this as a choke to suppress common mode current just by connecting my coax to either side, and. Uh, which is a lot easier than wrapping coax around a toroid. 
It is. Um, some folks like prefer to use the coax. I've done um, certain coax uh, balance <coughs> chokes, and you get great, you get good, you get good performance out of them. But um, I like doing this. Uh, now, I think we talked a little bit in the other show that this is not a balance. Mm -hmm. This is a choke, and so it's a piece of um, a coaxial cable with ferrite beads that are placed on this, and then put in place by some some heat shrink. So what this does is it just attenuates any currents that take place on the outer shield of your coaxial cable. Um, what this won't do is balance a uh, dipole, for example, to, to a coax connection. It'll just suppress common mode current. So um, I, don't, I don't know how they do if they use metrics in, like a, in Europe to measure these things. I have no idea. Yeah, and I know. What's, what's well, 240 all the supply millimeters? places... The supply places are all in America, as far as I know, the ones I know about. Mouser, we invented Digi. iron. Well, yeah, a lot that's of right, Swede. Shipped, uh, mm -hmm. shipped in for um, from China. But what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're, when you buy these, they try are. to buy them from reputable dealers because you can get different. You, like you can, like, um, here's one that's constantly knocked off. So this is a um, T200, so that means it's two inches across. And um, this is a this is a mix two. This is a powdered iron toroid core, and a lot of companies make these, or the or people in China, unscrupulous manufacturers, will make these out of questionable materials and just enamel coat them with some red, and uh, they may or may not work well. But <clears throat> what we did for today's testing is is that I took this um, 18 gauge wire, and I did 10 wraps around each one of these. Let's see if I have something over here. Is that the good stuff? The good one. Adam. Right Adam has a question. Do, can you get those pre-made? Sure. Um, you might be able to. Like a lot of times, you can just get them pre-made as part of a device or a package. I don't. I don't know where you can buy hand a wrapped, wrapped a wrapped toroid. Yeah. I mean, so you like can. Like, yeah, because you could get like a, a choke ballon or a four to one or a nine to one or whatever from LDG and MFJ and. Yeah. eBay has a lot of that stuff too, but beware. Yeah. So this is just a, this is what you would call mm -hmm. an air wrapped inductor or an air wrapped coil. And you would use this for in, uh, inserting induction into a circuit. And if you had this hooked up to a meter and you, you did a reading on it, you'd get a very low induction value. So what folks will do is to increase the magnetism of, of something like this, they'll put a piece of iron or uh, some kind of magnetic material through the center of this. Bolt. And what that does is it increases the permeability that we were talking about earlier. So I think air has a permeability of one is what it's considered. Um, and that's why, like, you see people say, do an ugly balance, do an air-wound uh, coaxial choke. They don't really work that well, and you have to really be specific around how you size them. Uh, once you increase the magneticism, you start to get more broadbanded capabilities. Um and so that's why we wrap things around these different materials like toroids. And then the nice thing about a toroid being round is, is that you can kind of control the direction that the magnetic flux goes through this device. You can't do that with like a ferrite bar or uh, iron bar inserted into an air wrapped coil. So that's the answer to Stephen product. Reynolds' question that I've got up there. Yeah. So yeah, you you can, but it just it from my perspective, it doesn't work as well. And I'm sure some it's, electrical engineer is going to come in here and say, "I've been air wrapping on ferrite bars for 40 years, boy." I think it's and all that, about space efficiency, and that's right. that's what it really comes yeah. down to. You get a lot of inductance out of these toroids in this yeah. configuration. So the other thing is, is that the technique that we're going to use today will help you. Like, whenever you get a toroid in the mail, get a sharpie and write the mix on there. Exactly. Because if you don't, you're going to forget what it is. So yes, I've got some unknown toroids over here. But with, when you do this test, what you can do is do it with a known value and then do it with the unknown toroid, and you'll see the same um, patterns. And when you see the same patterns, you'll be able to say, oh, okay, well, this is, that, this is this particular type of mix. The other thing is that this is what you would do if you were going to test and say, well, I'm going to build this type of device, whether it's going to be an LC match or whether it's going to be a trans match at the base of your antenna or it's going to be a, um, a low-pass uh, filter. You, you may want to do some testing to make sure you have a good t working toroid for the frequencies that you expect. Whew. All right. So let me move some of the stuff and just show you the test setup that we have today. It's a little bit different than the one we did last time. You can still do the one you have last time. This is a um, Nano VNA, and it 
has two ports on it. Um, channel one is a, um, a receive only port. Channel zero is one that produces a signal and it can measure that signal being reflected back into itself or can push the signal out and be read over here on channel one. And so for today, we're going to squirt our signal out channel zero through a circuit and then bring it back into channel one. And so for the test, what I did is I, this is just a quick toroid wrap. This, this is a, um, 140 dash six. So it's a mix six powdered iron core. Um, and I have the 10 wraps on that. And I have that going through the center conductor of this blue coax that goes into the nano VNA. Does that have green too on the bottom? Um, well, what I have here, it's a black wire. Oh, this, no, it's not about the toroid. Never mind. Oh, no. It's, so the thing is, is when they, when they paint these things, they don't paint the whole thing. Yeah. Um, now, if you get one that's yellow and green, it's a different mix. It's not mix six. Um, but anyhow, this is a... Um, shorted we shorted out the shield with this black wire on, on the bottom and so what we do is we do a sweep on our nano vna and let me pull that up real quick and i want to go to here and then you can see that this is the uh, frequency response so this sweep is running from one megahertz to 60 megahertz and down here at the lower end, you have almost zero attenuation. So like if we were going to use this for a common mode choke, and that, that's what the use case we're going to be talking about today, I wouldn't want to use this because I don't get much attenuation. So like attenuation values for chokes that you're looking at, like they say around 20 dB down is, um, is, is good. And then they also will say that um, 25 is better, 30 is best. Yeah, so... Hollywood, how you doing, buddy? He says a ferret rod is open will have a magnetic field is much larger than a toroid close where the field is not. Um, yeah, they use the toroid. They um, use that for the um, antennas that they put in the AM radios, right? But I, it's my understanding that one of the challenges when you use like those open open inductors. I got to get rid of my name over here. Um, it's, it's, we can't forget who you are. I got well, you. Man. But the thing is, is that you also get a lot of leakage, right, in there. So they're not as they're not as efficient. But we hey, have a couple other the... questions. If you want to, uh, yeah, that's fine. If you want to roll on, or want me to come back with questions, or <laughs> so. Um, oh, this I, I got to switch my my. I guess Stephen we're... Reynolds was asking open open as not in a loop, but I don't remember now what we were talking about when he said that. So somebody was asking about binocular. And um, binoculars is the other ones, yes. So these aren't binoculars. These are ferret beads, but I zip tied them together to get a binocular core. Yeah. And I was using this for a certain type of choke that I was that I was building. Now I could make this, I'm sorry, transformer, not choke. I could make this exact same thing uh, on a toroid. It didn't matter. But I was using these for space and, space and efficiency. And I think with the binocular cores, you have some more material in there. So I think that you can get higher temperature ratings on those. So let me grab something. Because they're joined in the middle, right, usually? So it's one big piece. Kind yeah, of. and so this is a really common thing that you'll see binocular cores on. And so here's one here, and then this is two of them banded together. This is, a, this is an amplifier. And so under this heat sink, what we have are transistors. And these transistors do the amplification work, but... When we have a, a device like this, what we're doing is, is that we're sending in a signal that needs to be amplified. That signal is coming in off of a 50 ohm uh, connection, right? So as, it, as your RF comes in here, it's expecting to see 50 ohms. Otherwise, you're going to have an impedance mismatch and you're going to have SWR problems. So when that 50 ohm signal comes in, it goes through this this uh, binocular core first and it gets downshifted to an impedance that matches the transistors. Once the power comes out of the transistors and is now amplified, it goes through this set of transformers, which is a little bit bigger because we are talking about more energy now. And then it gets it gets transformed back to 50 ohms. Um, so this is a use case that you would use though. Sometimes you see the binocular cores used um, in antennas, but most of the time you'll see it used as a transformer like this um, on a device like this, or you'll see them in, for the similar thing inside your inside your radio. And then here, here's some examples of, of these bead cores that I, that I use. All right. Let's go back to here. 
Adam, good for you. Just yeah, passed as general. Way to go. Congratulations, Adam. Congratulations. All right, so then coming down here on this on this curve, I guess we're seeing around 60. It looks like it's around negative 15 or so uh, dB, which is not going to be enough to do any any meaningful set of a uh, set of attenuation. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take out this yellow. Actually, let me put that back for a second and set that as a reference. And that means I got to go over to Nano VNA Saver and set as reference. All right, so what we have now is we set that as a uh as a reference and then what i'm going to do now is i'm going to put connect up another um another rat toroid and so that way we can, can we can compare the two and these these powdered iron um cores you see those used a lot in things like um very specifically tuned circuit and that, that's one of the things that they're good at. So you'll see them in like bandpass filters, low pass filters, and stuff like that. Um, we're going to throw in here is a mix 31. And so what we what we saw before is that these mix 31s are kind of the recommended toroid um, for choking. Sorry, guys, it's taking me forever. It's not like we're live. It's okay, man. Right, well, you're not going anywhere. And I'm hearing lightning or thunder here, so I don't know if. Uh... But you're you're in the house. You're not in the. In the yeah, oh, I'm in the house. You wouldn't be able to. It'd be like some kind of Joe Bread action if I was out in the shop. All you'd hear is the rain hitting the tin. All right, hopefully, I got that uh, set up right. All right. <clears throat> so what you can see here, this is the attenuation on that um, on that thirty one. Now you can increase attenuation up to a certain point by increasing the number of wraps or the material or the wire that you're using to wrap it. Like you might get different performance out of solid core or magnet wire than you would out of uh, wrapped with coaxial cable or something along those lines. And I think we're picking up some interference somewhere on this thing, but it's close enough that I don't care. So what you can see is is that down here we're below 33. Looks like for most of this, so that's uh. That would be a good example of, of a choke or a uh, toroid that you'd want to use for for choking. Um, let me set that as my current reference. So there we go. And now what we'll do is we'll we'll, we'll try a different one. Now I have a toroid here that I've never messed with. Um, I ordered it because um, Kevin, I think it's Kevin Hella G World. He's from the Toad Harbor Net. He's constantly the other giving toads. me. He's, he's constantly telling me, "Hey, man, you need to, you you need to use one of these K-type toroids, um, or test one of these out." And so they use these, and I believe they use these at the higher frequencies, like, um, uh, what, like one hundred and sixty and eighty, and and actually Hollywood probably knows knows better, um, because I think these things have better temperature handling. I'm not one hundred percent sure on that. I ha really don't know much about them, but I told told Kevin I would I would get one of these and do some tests on it. So this is going to be the first time I've ever put this thing on a, any kind of measurement. Sparks are going to fly. <laughs> so we'll, it'll be exciting to see. And so I, I actually have to catch up to him. I believe that he, they were using these as common mode chokes or balance on um, doublet, doublet antennas. He was actually telling me that they, they were working on a four-core now and so it would be four of these cores stacked together for um, heat dissipation because those guys don't play around all right let me go back to your nano vna saver and that would mean i have to change that in obs to this there we go <clears throat> well so when we take a look at that um it does look like we have better um better attenuation down here at the, at the higher bands than we do down. So maybe I was wrong about that use case. Um, but you can see like each one of these gray bars that go up and down are, are hand band segments. And so what it looks like is, is it below 10, it's actually, it actually attenuates less, which is uh, not an ideal scenario. So I'll be, I'll be, I'll be dipped. Um, let's see. Is there any? Has anybody got anything in there that they're they're asking now? 
Um, Thump said it's like playing cards with his brother's kids. Well, it, it, it kind of is. <laughs> this is too early for the old uh, apes planning. For, for apes planning. <laughs> I got to oh, tell you. Thank man. you for picking on him, man. It makes me feel validated. You're Don't not sensitive at all, Jim. No, I'm not. He's not. Uh, listen, ape is the doctor of toroids here, man. I don't know about all that, but so you know when I when I started to get into amateur radio and HF and stuff like that, like one of the things I was always seeing was people saying. You know, do you need a ballon for a dipole antenna? And so, like, the first antennas that I've made, obviously, were dipoles because they're easier and they perform well and stuff like that. And I was going all over, like, YouTube and stuff like that trying to get information about what a ballon was because when I looked online, I was like, well, I can buy one, but I don't know if I'm buying the right one. And they're, like, 50 bucks. And so I was like, I guess I'm going to go the route of of building – a ballon for, for my antenna, but I couldn't find any really solid information that explains the what, the how, the why, the choice selection and all that. So I just kind of started, you know, putting pieces together over time and that's that's kind of what happened. But That's how it works, yeah. So here's a 52 that's on here and um, you can see this 52 is behaving similar to the K type where below 10 meters it looks like we have less attenuation, but above 10 meters it looks like we have more attenuation. Um, now, so on the, these 52s, as opposed to using them as common mode chokes, a lot of folks use these as ununs uh, in the higher bands. And I think it's because they have more uh, higher permeability and they, and they do a better job of transforming. And the, the way that energy works at, at different frequencies is different, right? At the higher frequencies than it is lower frequencies. So you have to use things with different, different characteristics. I think that, oh, here's the red one. We wanted to, we wanted to put the red one on here. I don't think we did that. I don't think we did that one yet. And I would expect this red one to behave similarly to the uh, to the yellow one that we had on here earlier. And I'm using these uh, BNC banana clip binders or whatever that we call them, and that they are fantastic. Cobra head connector. Is that the official? No, I just call it a binding post adapter. That's what. Yeah, that's the word I use for it too. <clears throat> yeah, there you go and you can see that's really similar to the yellow one that we had on there earlier and so nothing nothing too exciting and I, th I think that the lesson is is that here's how you can test these and then you want to use ferrite type materials um as opposed to as, as opposed to the uh powdered iron for chokes and and one-to-ones i don't know if that's enough information or not Jason's talking about his uh, Dana ring gear having permeability, and I don't know. I don't. I think it wouldn't be a problem at all. You should try it. What is the Dana ring gear? He's talking about the drive axles in a Jeep. Well, in an official four x four vehicle. Gotcha. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same word that they use, like permeability, right? So it measures moisture's ability to go through the ground, uh, magnetic flow through the, this inductor or the uh, I guess the o-ring your o-ring but uh, that went quick I think that was <laughs> so <laughs> so was... what can we do with this information that we now that we have it I mean what what, what kind of practical things can we assemble like what, what's a good antenna to make well um, for from from my perspective any antenna that you make you want to have some sort of choking device, whether it's a choke or a, or a one to one uh, ballon on there to reduce any currents that are trans that are transferring on the outside of your coax, um, because those those can give you a shock. So you can touch your equipment and you get shocked that way. <clears throat> they introduce noise. So they raise your, your they, they lower your signal to noise ratio. Um, and then it can call general general havoc. So like sometimes like you, know, you did a video where you were operating FT8 and you had a, a USB cable that was running between your laptop and your your radio. And if I remember correctly, when you would transmit, your laptop would freeze up, right? Yep, yep. And, and that's, a, that's a really common thing. So like a lot of times what we'll see is folks will ask us questions around, hey, whenever I'm on FT8, I get this message that um, the, uh, WSJTX is disconnected from my radio. Lost rate well, The reason control. it disconnected yeah. is because of the current on that cable stopped that cable from working correctly. 
And so what you can do is you can just wrap, like you, some people would just use a, to, uh, a bead to put the snap on beads around their cable. Or you can wrap your your um, cable with, uh, with a toroid. So I actually keep one of these in my, here it is, but I keep one of these in my um, radio bag just in case I've ever got to wrap a cable real quick while I'm out. Uh, like, if, I won't say I'm out in the field because I don't go out field operating very much, but like when Not I take like my gym. radio. I'm going to take my radio somewhere, like if I go on like a, a, a business trip, for example, and I take my radio, then I'll I'll have one of these in case I need to wrap a wire or something like that real quick. So I mean, I, I field operate. I operate out the door of the house to the door of the shop. I mean, that's, you know. I just yeah, set so up my antenna. Ken, there, there, there is significant price differences in, um, like the powdered irons are usually around two or three bucks a piece. Now that's going to depend. So, like, here's a here's a um, itty bitty trap that we made, and um, this is a really little teeny tiny powdered iron core on here, and I, these are about thirty cents a piece. And so, mix six. Yeah, mix six. And then I've got this bigger one over here that we did the test on. This is the exact same material, same kind of toroid, but this this one was probably five bucks, somewhere somewhere right around there. Now, when you start to talk about the ferrites, these, like a, like a 31, I believe these are about $9, um, 9 to 10, 11 bucks, something like that. And then that K-type that uh, Kevin told me to buy, th this one was 20. So depending upon the, the size, the amount of material and the type of material, um, the, pr the price ranges uh, pretty, pretty wildly. Don said winch. I don't think he meant... Yes. I don't think he meant winch. I think he meant winch. winch. But he, he said it with that southern accent. Right. <laughs> but he's got a Texas accent, right? Yeah, he's got a Texas accent. It's different. <laughs> so they're not south. Right. So like I was mentioning, there's a lot of different types of um a lot of different types of chokes that you can that you can make. Uh like this this is one that was similar to the one we tested the other day. These work really well. Um, but they're they're larger. So if you make a choke like this and you want to put it at the feed point of your antenna it's going to be a little bit heavier. So like if you have your antenna, if your dipole is only attached at the ends of the wire, this is going to sag in the middle. So you're going to need some kind of something or other to help reinforce that in the center. Um, and so that gets a little bit, little bit unwieldy. And so that's where a lot of times folks will use something like this at the feed point of their antenna because it's lighter, it has less drag and stuff like that. But it, it really is going to depend on, on what you want to do. And then like I use the, the coax wrapped ones on the back of my t back of my tuner, so that way I'm, ch I'm cutting off any current that's coming into the actual radio mm. system. Don, you so, run FT8 long enough that it stops working, and then you know. Yeah. So, so would you, <laughs> well, you see saturation problems? What stops working the more, radio or the or the antenna? Yeah, the antenna. You you'll see a saturation problem more often than not on a transformer than you will a a, uh, a balance. So you see it more on a non than a balance. And it's it's a byproduct of inefficiencies in the circuit. One of those little right. handheld temperature things. Yeah. yeah. But so the thing is, is you can take the temperature with the handheld temperature thing, but that doesn't tell you if you're at your saturation point. Right. So like I, I remember the first time that I um, had a problem with it's called uh, the Curry temperature. At which point a to a toroid loses its magnetic characteristics. So when that happens, your your toroid doesn't work as designed. Now you can let it cool off and it'll go back to working just fine. Or if you continue to heat it, it might explode on you. Explode. Now powdered iron one is less likely to explode than a, than a ferrite one, but it, I suppose it could happen. Um, but you can look at that spec sheet and then, I don't know if we still have that Palomar thing um, available for perusal, but in there it'll tell you, like look at a spec sheet for the tow road that you bought and it'll tell you what the curry temps are. I won't make and it. And that way, that way you can know. I mean, I suppose we could do a uh, a video trying to push one of these things to a to a saturation point, but it's got to get pretty dang on hot. And um, Chuck, you had a uh, you ha you had a forty nine to one that I that some guy I guess he was trying to smoke it or something like that. He got it real hot on the back of the case. Yeah, you could see where the case melted from the getting. He so was hot. doing he was doing fifteen hundred watts on FT eight. Yeah, I guess that'll do it. If you scroll down, I think it's got in that table. And that antenna was the Curie temperature. Good for fifteen hundred watts or more. Actually, five thousand watts, but it still got hot. Here, maybe right here is some temperature stuff. Here we go. The Mix Thirty One's got a uh, a Curie temperature 
Curie temperature of Curie. 130 degrees Celsius. I have no idea what that is in American. Alexa, convert 130 C to Fahrenheit. It's over 130 200. degrees Celsius is 266 degrees Fahrenheit. 266. Well, there you I think go. it's 266 or something like that, isn't it? In Freedom Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> so here you can see some of the different... Uh, in countries that have walked on the moon units, it is 266 well, degrees. Well. Well. Yes. Supposedly. In countries that have shown out awesome propaganda about walking on the moon, it's in 266 <laughs> degrees. For those of right. you who are in the ape school of denial. The, the, we walked on the, uh, the, the, set, the movie set in Huntsville. T.O. Right. Yes. I did, I did. Do, do countries that crash landed on the moon count in this argument as well? Can we? <laughs> no. Because that has happened. Did China crash land something on the moon? No, it wasn't China. I think the Russians did, maybe? I don't remember. <clears throat> I think I saw something where they were saying it's either the moon or Mars that there was a whole bunch of water. They found more water up there. On on Mars, yeah. And so it's like well, we got to probably had a lot of rain this year, too. I mean... So you you know like the 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 industrial the uh, industrial complex is like we got to get up on that Mars and pollute that water. You mean to tell me there's unpolluted water in the solar system? <laughs> I'm a Republican. I need to go pee in some water somewhere and <laughs> make it terrible. What are we What are we looking at here? What That's is this, just Jim's? The current radar for here. Nice. The, little, the pin is me. Oh, so this other comes are past you now. You're fine. Um. It's still it's still Isn't raining in the middle of it right now. <laughs> I'm I'm right here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, but the lightning is over to the east. Oh. Oh, there you go. Now we got some more lightning. Look at that. Oh, look at just his Ooh. house, right there. Boom. Dang. I'm not hearing I'm not hearing a whole bunch of thunder, but it's um. No. What's well, because you, you got your earbuds in, right? Yeah, but I can hear outside just fine with them. I gotta tell you what, if if you want Jim to go mobile out in the yard and get a real live weather report, put one oh, in yeah. the chat. Yeah, I do. You need to put more than a one in the chat. I'm just saying. You <laughs> well, know I mean, what I'm you saying? Can get, you can get your phone out. Don't you got? Don't you have that? Uh, you have that Cricket wireless phone. You can fire that camera up and go out there. And, got no Cricket wireless phone. It'd be kind of cool to get a. Uh, Y'all need to put way more than a one in the chat if you don't understand. <laughs> you know what I mean? Dawn went ten. There you go. Is that better? Jason's getting some pretty good uh, boomers at his house too. Is he yeah, down it's there? It's raining. You? Uh, he's in the foreland. I don't. I don't remember where. <clears throat> Somebody said to go hold up a seventeen foot antenna. <laughs> yeah, wrap, I want to grab that MFJ in. whip and go out there. Freedom! Right, wrap yourself in foil and then uh, go out there and do that. Seems legit. Seems that legit. Be, uh, that would be something else. But anyhow, as they say down here, it's raining like a cow pissing on a flat rock. <laughs> there you that go. is a saying down here. I was like, "What?" Hit, hit hey, it. So it's tough that over. happens all the time. I'm sure. Is somebody going to play? The hey, music with camo, again? you can do a wireless card, a wireless camo. Yeah, I know. You're I all, could. You're all set up. To quote we'll wait. a famous person, just because you can do a thing doesn't mean you should do that thing. I think you should go. He needs there. some milk. Thanks, Lionel. Thanks, Lionel. Lionel, appreciate it, man. <laughs> So what I'm saying I was saying is, like, I was I was, was operating enough, one day, um, FT8. That's no. not a surprise to anybody. And what um, what happened was is that my SWR started to go crazy, and I could not figure out what the problem was. And I'll tell the rest of that right after we dance, because Jason uh, F K4 HEF just just bought five memberships. Oh, awesome! Thank you, thank you, F. Thank you. Douglas, exactly right. But what I noticed is my SWR started to go more and more crazy. And so the f first thing I thought was, well, I must have a loose connection somewhere. I oh, just I heard, heard the that. Thunder. That was here. I heard it. <laughs> we don't get um, much here, but every once in a while, we've had a couple, at least two or maybe three storms this year that got thunder and lightning. Oh, that's it's common here. Yeah, Richard KO4OBR is up in the Birmingham area. He's about 80 or 90 miles north of me. Hef, where are you at? I, I don't remember where you are. You are. 
Jason doesn't want you guys to dance. I can't stop it. You can't stop the signal, man. Can't stop the signal. What do you mean? I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Looks like TM's camera. Needs some milk. Thank you, Jason. No, he said no dance required, so I said somberly. Hey, but speaking no, of no, saying somberly, were you drinking a Corona on Thursday night stream? I was. What? It's, I was surprised it, nobody so noticed. Well, I, during the stream, I was like, I think Tio just took a hit off a Corona bottle. It, but then um, <laughs> I went back because I go through the streams just to kind of check and make sure, like, if there's any production. Level up your game, that. yeah. And mm -hmm. I, and you were, you were you were you were pounding them back, and so making sure he don't got a booger on his nose. He needs to edit out, right? That was right. Thursday. Yeah, yeah, Thursday. Ah, I missed that. I didn't see it. My my once a year, twice a year celebration. Thank it was you, Cinco de Tio. I, I always dance on the inside. I'm a happy guy. So I've done more dancing since we started doing this coffee and ham radios business than I have done in my entire life. You can probably tell. Anyhow, Same here. So. <laughs> nah. Same here. So when I was operating, my SWR started to go wonky, and it started to get worse and worse, and I couldn't figure out what it was. So I started checking all my connections, and maybe my cable's bad or something's wrong with my antenna. And... Uh, Finally, I figured it out. My sat my my nine to one that I was using was saturated from heat, and it lost its magnetic properties. And so, what I had to do is I had to wait. I had to wait for it to cool down, and then uh, it started to, it started to work just fine. Hmm. So, when you talk about like nine to ones, there's a there's a couple of different um, schools of thought there. What are we looking at here? The muff map. The muff. Well, a while back, Raphael was saying that uh, six was opening. So I pulled up the muff, what? and at the time, s s calm down, Charles, not in California. Damn but if you look over here in the Asian Pacific, in the Ring of Fire. Um, I fell in that's not the Ring of Fire. It's on the other side. Uh, I know it's not the Ring of Fire. No one else knows that. Who cares? Shut up. <laughs> so I'm going to start correcting match. you when you say toroid. toroid. Toroid is how you say it. Toroid. Tor anyway. Yeah, that's not right. Down here where flight 377 is somewhere, this was open to to six meters and up on northern Australia. But now since that was like 30 minutes, 45 minutes ago, six meters has moved up into uh, India and Malaysia and uh, up in here. Into, well, I mean, that's uh, just that's right on the end of six meters, right? In the stands. Yeah. So this whole area should be six meters. Oh, dang close, you definitely, definitely get some good 10 meter live action. Yeah, I'd be trying it. Now, and, and somebody said this, I think it was Don, SKT said this a little while ago. Mm -hmm. You know, I've told you guys I've been lighting up 12 meters and 15 and all that. Man, yesterday, 12 meters was dead as fried chicken. And ten, so was 15. 15 seemed to be also. And 10 was too, yeah. I a, didn't we get a little bit of a solar? I think there was some, I was going to, that's what I'm asking. I think there was a, and I, I, a but solar I was testing. thing. When I was testing yesterday, 20 was the only thing of the three bands that I did. I did 10, 15, and, and 20. And I swear 20 was gone for a little while because it was, it was like really good signals. And then all of a sudden, I didn't see anything. And then Nothing. really good signals yeah. again. It checks it can the look DX pretty much. Heat. If I build an antenna, the band usually dies that day. Check what? I test it. And DX Heat. DX Heat. DXHeat.com slash DXC. I used to have that up here. I think you got to put that slide. Or, or. And then I think there's a propagation thing. Can you click on that? On? On the right there. Go down a little bit. Keep going. There you go. That's there it saying. is. Look at that heat map. Look at that heat. So North America is open on 10, 15, 17 to Europe. To Europe. To Europe. And then it's open on 20 and 40 to itself. Yeah, so if, like if uh, if say James wanted to talk to Chuck, probably twenty or forty, probably twenty mm -hmm. would be your best bet right now. Yeah, but if but if he was going to talk to the Swede, then <coughs> he would have a couple of different options there. So I assume that this means it might happen occasionally, but it's really crappy, and this is only slightly crappy on ten to South America. So I couldn't hit Raphael, or yeah, there's a chance. Mean? There's a there's a little explanation at the bottom of the scale. 
I can't read it though. My, I have to get my split. It says device. based on all DX spots from of stations in North America during the last 60 minutes displayed by continent and band. So let me look at South America. And see, that's splattering over into North America. So Raphael, who is in, aren't you in Rio? So he can hit the EU. I think Scott's trying to tell us something. He's saying use Vola Cap. I'm not sure I understand what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> Voice of America <laughs> condition. Some, I forget what it what oh. it stands for, but it's a prediction model for predicting which oh, would be the best way to contact who from where. Let me share this one, Jim. What even is, has like this um, is good for six Vol meter. Vocap even has like you can put the antenna that you're using, right? You could be like, I'm using a dipole, and the person I'm trying to contact is using a Yogi. This is a pretty good one for six. N3 TUQ DX map. I think it does multiple bands, but uh, it shows the contacts people. These are re recorded contacts on six. Well, it looks like it's coming out of. Out of Europe somewhere. Well, that's interesting. <clears throat> so he's getting down there into Malaysia and Thailand and Vietnam and all that, but nothing to Australia. And, and when I looked at it earlier this morning, the northern northern tip of Australia, whatever state that is, Queens, Wales, land or something, um, was showing that it was available on six. Looking on the muff. So did you run out to the ham shack and fire up the fire up? The no, cake? man, no. I was eating my breakfast and drinking coffee. And like a sausage? No, not this morning. I made steel cut oats in the uh, instant pot for me, and she had grits. How long are you cooking them in the instant pot? Yeah, is that I do the rice setting. Dump in a, a, the oats. Less water than they tell you. About a third less water than they tell you. Why? Because you like them dry. I don't want runny. I'm not an ogre. I don't want gruel. I want really got to be like grish. Like like you may be able to pick them up with your hand and and bite into them. Yes, like how oats should that's be. exactly right. That's like exactly a cookie. Right. You know, like an oatmeal raisin cookie. I, I, I don't know. I would go quite that hard of a cook, but yeah, you could pick them up and you could hand eat them like a. No, what know, I'm saying is oats aren't heathen. any good in anything except for oatmeal raisin cookies. No, I hate. I do like an oatmeal raisin, raisin cookie. Despise you. I how come you didn't eat in grits? Because I didn't want grits. I got oats. I like oats better than grits. I like grits better than oats. Really? Really? Yankee boy in Nebraska eats grits more than he eats oats? I would, yeah. <clears throat> I actually get the, uh, and there's no self-respect in Southerner would eat it, but I get the Quaker instant grits. <laughs> Son, <laughs> you'd be tarred and feathered and run out of town. <laughs> I now, I, when I do grits, when I do grits in instant pot, they come out. Super good. I get the the stone ground stuff. Not, it's probably not in your big box supermarket. But this know. is the section on cooking with Jim. Right. It's not cooking. I throw water and crap in an instant pot. <laughs> See, I've got to. I got Magic. a little rice cooker. It's not an instant pot, but you could probably lazy do cooking the same with Jim. Thing. You could probably do it. Yeah. I just like doing it in the instant pot because it adds an element of danger. It looks like pressure. Antony. Antony doesn't like uh, doesn't like grits. He's grits are fine if you add cheese and pepper and bacon. And to the man, them. the man lives in an oven mitt. He should know better. What do you mean he lives in an oven mitt? He lives in he lives in the you know Michigan, oh. Some, somewhere around somewhere around there. I don't know actually, <laughs> but that's how <laughs> Michiganders give directions to their house. Yeah, I like I like shrimp and grits with a little yeah. bit of like oh, yeah. Yeah. chopped up yeah. in there. Hell yeah, and. On on Dewey sausage. I think I might have to make that today. I'm get, that, that just that just got me all. That was kind of the, the fired up. mac and cheese that I made the other day. I put in some shrimp and some Old Bay, and some Andouille sausage. Oh, man. Old Bay is just magic. See, I, I, that did look good to you. Now, normally, I think mac and cheese. And I'm not trying to offend anybody, so everybody. Oh, get here we go. Trigger alert. I look at mac and cheese as girl food. You know what I'm saying? Like that's a that's a girl side when you go to the barbecue. Wait till you put place. some really? lobster in it. Put some yeah, lobster but you, in that. But you did it. I mean, you had you had pig in there, right? You had so, uh, you had seafood in there. That that's that. that I would I, have eaten that. I I took a walk around the the world there. I did a little Cajun. I did a little seafood. Did a little American fare. Yeah, I would. Uh, I would so I see I see a couple of things here in the chat. And I would agree with Lee on that. Brown sugar on grits does not seem right. However, brown sugar on oats is 
the answer to all the world's problems and lots of grits, butter. bacon, cheese, butter. Yeah, I saw that grits, grits and you bacon. Can is, hold the bacon. Yeah. yeah, grits and bacon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah, Craig. Maple syrup on the grits. That seems pretty revolutionary. I don't do you know. boys eat ham steak at all? Mm-hmm. Do you, do you do it cured or uncured? Well, what what that, the hell that, is a ham steak? It's oh a ham that's cut in the shape of a steak, so it's fully. So if you are you talking? That's why I was saying cured or uncured, because it's a pork steak if it's uncured. It's a ham steak if it's. I mean, we eat. Cured. I eat ham. We buy a ham. You slice it and you eat it. But like a ham yeah, steak, but you, you it, slice it thick. Right. Like a. Like oh yeah. A steak. No, not that. Uh-uh. Well, the like, thing is, like, is use like your I, imagination, Jim. Typically, Sorry, we eat a cured ham steak, like a like a. That's a Yankee maple, thing, actually. Like a I maple cured know. ham steak or something. It's 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 a southern thing, I thought. And but mm-hmm. like you get them at Waffle House, and and so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I was I, I like them, but my doctor's like, bro, you can't be eating all that cured meat anymore. You got to start eating uncured pork and stuff. So I was at the store, and I'm like, look, man, I go over to the butcher guy. I'm like, look, man, I need to find a piece of uncured ham so I can eat. I need to eat my breakfast meat, and I guess that's my compromise because I won't eat turkey, pork, pork steak. Yeah, and, and if you get a well, real farmer who raises a real hog, pork steak is red meat. Are there fake not hogs? white meat? Yeah, didn't, white, they didn't white have meat. any. Pork is not white meat. They, did, they pork didn't is have delicious. any. Mistreated, mistreated really pork is white meat. Really? Yeah, so it was not... Uh, so you get yourself a Boston like butt and then slice a steak out of it is what you're really trying to do. I thought it was like the thigh, right? It's from the ham, right? Because like a... Like, so here's here's what's crazy, right? Like bacon is not ham. Bacon is pork, right? Or pig. Yeah. Ham is the... Ham is the... Ham is the, the butt end. that's been cured and smoked. And yeah, but the like Boston a, a, butt is the front shoulder. Yes, yes. It's really crazy the way that they call all these different cuts and stuff like that. And, and like, like we have two different words for it. It's like pork and pig. I think in Europe they only have one word where it's just pig, right? I, I don't, I don't. Oh, wait till call. you get into into guilt and barrow. You know, you start raising hogs, and then you got a whole new vocabulary, right? Sow. My buddy on was, lawn, you need here and a, a cow. Son. But what's wrong? Mike's won't girlfriend won't uh, doesn't doesn't partake of the ocean's products. That's okay. You you can go out and eat without her. <coughs> Is she allergic? I mean, if she's allergic, she gets a pass. Hey, Vern. Actually, hey. my daughter's mother is from Boston, and she sounds like it. And she doesn't touch seafood at all. Hmm. At Was all. Like a- I taught Macy about fish and shrimp, and now Macy can hold her own weight. In eating shrimp and scallops, grosses her mother mm. straight out. I can't Sturgeon's imagine really that good. people wouldn't want to eat that stuff. Can't I can imagine. see like some some kind of fish, right? Like I don't like particularly like a mackerel or something like that. You know what I mean? Or like a even a swordfish. People love swordfish. I don't like it. I feel I, it's it's too oily for me. I don't think I've sorry, ever Jason. Had a sword. <laughs> we'll do we we eat t- I'll do tuna. We'll get tuna steaks from the butcher shop. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> And salmon. Oh, that's good. And I'll do those. Yeah, so talk's making me hungry as hell. And oysters. Then, always, and then always hungry, it, man. I'm, oysters I'm okay with if they're fried. I don't want them raw. That's just nasty. Oh, man. Barbecue's not bad. Ride or fraud, but not canned. And now scallops, Julie won't eat them. Macy and I just will eat all of the scallops. scallops but if you get canned oysters, there you fry them, right? That's what I do with them. That's the only way to I kill them. I haven't. I should taste. They're, they're, they're pretty dang on good. They don't. They yeah. They just taste like texture when you get them canned, smoked canned oysters. It's like, yep, that was some texture I, don't, I, don't, I ate. I, don't, I love smoked food, but the smoked oysters, I cannot do that. That used to be a ritual when we go fishing. My my, uh, my kid and my two buddies, we we'd always have at least one can, one or two cans just while we're out trawling. You know, it was easy in the boat. I yeah, learned I very late in life that pork fried pork chops are actually very good. Oh yeah. Because when I grew up, my mother made fried pork chops, and I prayed for death or a tree to fall in the house. What is that shake were, and bake? Like that's what we used to have when I was a kid. It's just shake and bake, mama. It's and I seasoned. Hailed. Yeah, and it's, I hailed. It's like breadcrumbs. It's panko with shake seasoning. Shake and bake pork chops, yeah. and they were the worst. Yes, I mean, it, dry. Francis did that crap too. Dry. Yeah, I couldn't stand them. So oh, my aunt made awesome pork chops. Hated them. Hated them. And then I got started tip. learning how to cook pork chops, and I'm like. 
holy shit, this tastes awesome. You got to get yourself some Mike's Hot Honey. I don't know if you've had that or not. Mm -mm. Ooh, that sounds good. It is real good. And so what I do is I'll grill a pork chop, and then I'll, I'll, I'll grease it up real good with the Mike's Hot Honey, and they are fantastic. Hmm. I'm telling you, it, it, it's a life-changing it's a life changing thing. I I may have had it, but uh, my son's that sounds good. He got that he's got a new uh, pizza place that he he picked up. The guy was going out of business, and he he bought it. And one of their pizzas has a uh, spiced honey in it. And it's like wow, it's spicy. So Richard, you just eat fish. You don't eat shell. Right, so Richard, like your crustacean. religion is showing. I like the crustacean <laughs> ones better. But like, is a penguin considered seafood? I I mean it. It swims so. in the ocean, so it is seafood. Right. I mean, that's what I would Are consider. Are they mammals? Consider. Some? some people are like, well, what about seagull? People are like, that's a, that would be foul. That would be, or duck. Like, is a duck oh, it's seafood? Foul. I'm sure it is foul. <laughs> Seagulls are foul. That's right. <clears throat> I, I've got a neighbor, and he, this guy is as redneck as he could be. <laughs> he has a, like, a, I wouldn't even call it a pond. He's got a mud hole out in the backyard. And Noodling. whenever the Canadian geese are out there, he's out there blasting them. And his deep freeze is filled with with Canadian geese. And he's the, like, you want one it, of these by, things? By the way, they're they're not naturalized citizens of the country to the north. They're not Canadian geese. They're Canada geese. That's what I said. Canadian. Yeah, they geese. they're not from no. Canada. They're just they're Canada. not citizens. Right. So what, why do they call them Canada geese then? Because that's their name. I mean, you could call them Wawas if you want. I mean, why do you have the in front of smoke and ape? I mean, we would all know smoke and ape, right? Yeah, I don't know. But the, anyhow, the, he eats them sons of bitches all the time, and I'm just like, dude, that is that. Those things are basically flying rats, right? They they fly around, they 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 hang out in the sewers and stuff. Once somebody told me that Sandhill Crane is the ribeye in the sky, I've been wanting to get one of them. <laughs> Can you order one online? No, I just shoot it as it flies over the house. Right. It's funny. I saw him in Florida. I'm like, what is what is that thing doing down here? When I was in Orlando, because they they're up here now. Shane's Let's talk about clam chowder. No, Let's talk about good. clam chowder. I don't like clam chowder. I think clam it's chowder it tastes really good, but like in theory, like wrap your head around that. It's it's kind of disgusting when you actually like think about it. Yeah, but which kind? As far as New I'm England. concerned, New New England is the only kind I will eat. Yeah, not the red kind. That's no, the, that's just nasty. This is Manhattan. Like that. the red one, right? That's Manhattan. It's the same thing with with crab soup. Cream of crab soup is awesome. That Maryland crab soup, the red stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, there's supposedly, and I, I read car. about this in a book or something. Somebody reckon, mentioned Rhode Island clam chowder, which is more like clam soup with a that thin broth. It seems broth. gross to me. It, I would not eat it. Or, or, yeah. or what about clamato that you get from the grocery store? I actually like that. I tried it one time. It's okay. I wouldn't drink it. <laughs> so in a lot of hot sauce. mentally get past it. In, in a lot of different hot sauces, a primary ingredient is giant clam juice. And so l look on the back of your bottles of hot sauce, and you'll see it'll say, darn. say giant clam juice. I Lionel think that is, is absolutely nasty. correct. That's why I've never had it. I didn't it's capture it. Permits. It died over my house and fell. It tried to on steal the... my chickens, and I was defending my pets. That's right. Which is actually legal. Like, I can shoot my neighbor's dog if it tries to eat my chickens. Chelada, yeah. Looks like Adam Adam Dennis woke up and he's talking about his breakfast of choice. That's I'm, like Miller Lite plus Clamato. Chelada. And, and a little bit of hot sauce in there. Yeah. I mean, this I has been that. a great stream this morning because we've had Thump has been awake the entire stream almost. I know. I think he was at the very beginning. Yeah. And then Dennis is in here and I'm like, holy crap. I know what time it is in California. Dennis, a little early for you, isn't it, buddy? He was the late I think. He said he had to find out why, how we got into uh, from toroids to food. Well, Ape covered everything there was to cover about toroids. Everything. It, it might have been some more, but uh, I think we did enough. Calamari. Yeah, see, Dennis is saying he likes to put a little bit of clam juice in for uh, his Bloody Mary. Mary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So There's what exactly is clam juice? I mean, is these literal, literally clam squeezins, or is this like you... Boil the clams. I, th I think when the you liquid. crack the, I think when you crack the clam, there's some juice that comes running out. I think is what they, what it is. That's like the mustard in a crab. The liquor. <laughs> it's the clam liquor. I don't know. I think it's good, I, but I, I wouldn't. I don't like the idea of clam chowder for some reason. Man, I love clam chowder. My wife gets clam chowder for like when we go out a lot of times, and then she doesn't eat her meal because she's like, she doesn't eat a whole lot to start with. So then she's. 
already full. I'm, every time I just shake my head. It's like, hey. Is is alligator seafood? Seafood. Alligator swamp food. <laughs> like, it, but they they would probably sell it at the seafood I section, eat. right at the at the Piggly Wiggly down there in Montgomery. Uh, maybe the meat I section. Don't, they do sell some gator around here, but it's in the butcher stores. It's not at the grocery yeah. store. I've had it. I was. It's yeah. like I've had right, deep yeah. fried gator nuggets, and they're they're good. But I mean, you could deep fry anything, and it's good. Right? Yes, Brian's that's and that's correct. what I've had. That's what I like. Had. I don't think I want a gator burger or something like that. that I mean, I think right. it tastes like chicken. That's exactly right, Paul. Paul, who somebody try, said that. Try try deconstructing coffee. Jason, that, that doesn't make any sense either. But we all love it. I've had gator. I mean, it, it's like eating a chicken nugget. It didn't really have a special it's kind of like rabbit rabbit tastes like freaking chicken everything tastes it tastes like, like chicken. chicken with a little hint of an extra tiny bit of flavor it's interesting like yeah a fricassee. maybe did you is that how you cooked it like a fricassee no uh, grandma cooked it she fried it we had Remember fried elmer, rabbit elmer fudd was always going to do a mashed potatoes and gravy fricassee. green beans i don't even know yep. what a fricassee is it's like a uh it's like a tomato based vegetable dish with rabbit in it okay it's like tossed, like it's almost like an Italian I tomatoes. Stir fry. I think tomatoes are nightshades; they're poisonous. I don't eat tomatoes; they're bad. I don't tomatoes. mind tomatoes, but I also I don't, don't want my food swimming in red death. So, oh my god, I, lo I love tomatoes. So, when you make chili, do you put, you you don't put tomatoes in it? Yeah, I put tomatoes in there, but my, what I'm saying is like red sauce on Italian food. Mm. Oh my god! So you don't use the on sugar. So you don't do use pesto. the gravy, so like you don't make a, a You're gravy. offending the Italian in the stream here, Jim. <laughs> I'm married to an Italian. I can say what I want. So when you you don't make like a Sunday sauce or any of that kind of stuff? I that must be Yankee words. So when she <laughs> makes <laughs> when she Italian makes words. spaghetti, when she makes spaghetti, she makes the sauce separate. Ragu. And it has whatever <laughs> top chef. And it has um <laughs> No no. Ragu is a brand name, yes, but I was talking about the ethnic name. Yeah, like a ragu is a type of sauce, right? I, like I know what a real ragu is, yeah. Not that crap from the jar. No, she like we Prego is use, your cousin. My cousin's not in a jar. I used that joke on Clubhouse <laughs> one night. No, it's primo, sorry. <laughs> um yeah, she I mean she makes the she makes the sauce separate. And she uses onions and tomatoes and green peppers and all that. It's really good. What you're supposed to do with it is, those, like, you put like. Some well, we don't call it gravy. Gravy is brown or white and made from no, no. drippings so, and flour and milk. The way the way you do it right is, is you get yourself like a nice pork chop, uh, maybe a piece of beef, um, some sausage, right, some Italian sausage, and you and you kind of brown that into like a, uh, in like a big Dutch oven, right, and then, and put a little bit of maybe red wine or something like that in there, and, and then once that meat has been like seared, braised on the outside, then you take it out. And then you want to you want to kind of get that there's drippings off the bottom of there, and then use that as the base of your sauce and put your crushed tomatoes in there, your garlic, your onion, all that kind of stuff. Put the meat back in, and then let it simmer all day. I mean that sounds for fine. An, and for when an I Irish said man, I don't, he knows what he's talking about. When I said I don't like red sauce, it doesn't mean we don't have spaghetti without spaghetti sauce. Hey, would of would some you sort. put butter butter on there like a like a six year old? Is that how you have? No, it? no. <laughs> What I'm saying is, like, whatever I'm eating, I don't want it drowning in red sauce, like the crap they served you at grade school and called spaghetti. Yeah, yeah I don't want that either. You like, know, for like someone nice who's not sensitive, pasta. you're very opinionated, Jim. There's there's a yeah, difference. You think so? You think? There's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't like a, a lot of, I mean, less I'm sauce is more. Guy. No, I do not like, like curry. Poison. poison. I do not like curry. Oh, I, I don't like curry. curry. I don't like the night I'm not, curry, not a fan of Indian Ooh. food at all. Mm. I like I like um, curry from like uh, Thailand, like it's like a Thai curry is pretty, yeah. pretty yeah. good. Yeah, I'm not a fan. I mean, I, I get pud was... thai. I'll eat pud thai from one of the from the Thai restaurant in town, and they make an excellent pud thai. But I think I what think Douglas all. is trying to say something. You mean pad thai? Oh, Bo, he's talking about pud, pud thai. There. He's like pud thai. <laughs> I ain't never heard no pud thai. Pud Thai, Pad Thai, whatever. You're talking about like the shrimp and uh I get beef, but yeah. They do they do shrimp, beef, or chicken. I tell you what though, I did go to Mike's talking about chicken tikka masala. I went to an Indian restaurant and I and it was like all curry and stuff like that, and like in a buffet, and I was like, I don't know if I want to eat that. And then the guy said, Oh, we have a barbecue chicken, like an Indian barbecue chicken. It's like really red. But it's like it was good. I eat a pile of that. <laughs> 
Yeah, there's probably some stuff I would I would like to try. I mean, I've seen it on t- TV, right, on Top Chef or, or whatever, but like tandoori chicken looks pretty interesting. And that's Maybe probably that what you're chicken. talking about, yeah, I think. Yeah, that's probably what it is. Was it like tandoori. really red chicken? Redder than a baboon's ass, I'm telling you. Yeah, that's tandoori chicken. chicken. Yeah. yeah. I haven't ever had that. I would love to try it. I've seen it on oh, television. That's, that's it. Tandoori chicken's good. It was good. Don is correct. Is he really? Is that true? I think, I think he was from Arizona. I don't know if I, but I don't, I don't. I think Don might be leg pulling there because. And then Boomer's life had Japanese chicken curry, so you know it's from all over the world. I think Don might be make, leg pulling with that. April Fools. Because because they don't have very good cuisine in England. I'm sorry, I said it. <clears throat> Everybody who's English, you can just wow. What Tell else? I, really mash. I pretty much agree with the primate on that one. Like I went to I mean, England that, and I, they had a steak sandwich on their menu and I was like, I'll take that. And I'm thinking I'm going to get me like a South Philly steak and cheese. You know what I'm saying? And they bring it out and it's like two pieces of Wonder Bread, like lightly toasted with like this, almost like a steak, like a thin piece of <laughs> some kind of meat. One minute one, steak. One, right, just sitting, sitting on it that they must have been boiling in Worcestershire or something like that. I'm like, son, where's my fried onions, tomato? I want my lettuce. I want, you know, I want my cheese Whiz. They had none of that. <laughs> I might have to agree with Ape a little bit because we had a guy in the fire service. He wasn't from England, but his parents were. So guess where he learned to cook? And he was the worst cook in the fire department. It's all like boiled meat and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. See, I'm a a Mac, so I I eat things like haggis and pasties. It's good stuff. Pasties are probably okay, but haggis. I tried. I've ate haggis. My people people had a problem with a tomato crop one year and almost died. A tomato potato. Sorry. That joke just landed. Yeah, I was like, I thought, no wonder he doesn't like tomatoes. Potatoes. But I, there I was plenty of other food. There just wasn't any he was potatoes. A, he was attacked by tomatoes that night. And then they also eat night fried shades. blood over there. In, oh, yeah. blood sausage, yeah. Blood. Well, now, now the Cajuns, if you get real boudin, is made with blood sausage. Boudin. Which I like boudin, but I've never had real Cajun boudin because that's probably a little more than I want to go for. Yeah, I don't know about that blood sausage. Like the the Bible because it would taste clear. it would taste like liver blood out of stuff, right? Well, half the Bible says no pork at all. The other half, the Bible is like, yeah, go ahead, it's fine, it's all right. <laughs> Y'all eat liver, organ meat? I don't eat no, organ yeah. awful. Yeah, I don't eat awful because it's awful. There's there's tripe we, in the grocery store right now, and I'm not getting it. But so like you when you get when you eat like hot dogs and bologna and, and stuff like that. You're eating. You're eating the organ. You're, that's like hey, that's ape, like tails. Packers. Ape, my brother ape, from Baltimore. Let me let me just rock is. out Scrapple right now. Oh my god, that stuff is good. Oh, it's so but, awesome. But you're not going to eat. So like my grandfather, my grandfather would eat. He loved fried chicken livers, fried gizzards. Yeah, my mom would eat that shit. All the mom. crap that was inside the bird on Thanksgiving. Grandpa yeah, would my, have. My grandma would fry terrible. all that garbage up. Hey, Mike. My grandfather would eat stuff a goat wouldn't touch. But, but see, the thing is, is, like you could go to like the farmer's market and stuff, and they got like a whole pan of like gizzards and livers and mm-hmm. hearts and stuff like that from from chicken. And people love that stuff. Yeah, not me. They say it's good for you, but like in in like in the street food, like in like China and like um, in Philippines and stuff like that, they you can get a skewer that's like coated with like chicken livers and stuff like that. It looks oh, yeah. actually. I've got way too much good. iron in me already. I don't need any more. Well, yeah, growing up, my mom would make liver and onions. Her and my grandmother conspired to try and get me to eat that stuff. And I could smell it in the house, and I just was not around. If it's cooked right, it's good. It. I tried it. I, I would yeah. rather eat dirt with worms in it than liver. God, gas station almighty, fried chicken. Nasty. Oh, we have some good gas station Lou, fried you are right a here. hardcore man. And I will eat gas station fried chicken. I will not lie. I will oh, also yeah, eat gas station pizza. When you're when you're working on a pizza. on the bus, you you're eating wherever you can stop the truck for three minutes gas to get station, something. So yeah, gas station pizza is the best. Like the longer it's been under the heat lamp, the better. <laughs> well, it it finishes well, it cooking kills more, and it kills well, all like you the get a hot dog things that's been on that roller for two days. It's almost like a oh, slim yeah. gym, you know. Right. By the, time. <laughs> the, the cheese on the gas station pizza doesn't like string away as you take a bite. It just like you just slice through. It, cr- it. Oh, it crunches. It's, yeah, it's kind of like a best. cracker. <laughs> Perfect. No, like oh my lord okay chicken steve what are we doing for nuggets monday night 
I got another box of mystery parts I'm looking at. That I think that might okay. be a good show for us because I don't know what like this. This guy was building QRP kits, so there's a whole bag of all these different pieces that I have no idea what they do. There's like an ESP32 in there. There's a um, Soft Rock 40, which is like the original <laughs> SDR. So play with some of that stuff. I think. I think. Okay. The soft the Soft Rock 40. The hard yeah. the Hard Rock 40 is the CW radio, right? I think it's an amplifier or something. This is this is like a little USB dingus with a uh, audio cable. If you had dingus in your uh, bingo card, and I didn't say it, so it's worth twice the points. Right there, you go. <laughs> Steve's going to go out and get himself some gizzards. Oh no, son. gizzards! No. Yeah. <laughs> Those. If oh, we inspired, inspired you to, to buy something, yeah. if we inspired you for that, I, I apologize. We have, we have tumblers and sticker packs and antennas. You can get an NFED half wave. You can get a linked dipole. About a million things you can get on coffee. We have, we have these, these fancy things. Yeah. Yeah. James is right. So I was going to make uh, chicken wings but uh, today, but now y'all got me. I think Just I might want something cover them bit. heavily in Old Bay. Put them in the I air. I thought fryer. you were going to make uh, shrimp and grits. Oh, yeah. That, all right. Well, you've come to another end of an exciting episode of coffee and ham radios <laughs> so greatly, gotta appreciate, go cook. <laughs> greatly appreciate everybody being here thanks for everybody in the chat uh, thanks for joining guys and all that it was fun had a great time have a nice rest of your saturday everybody yeah